Hi, Shannon O'Flaherty here. And tonight I'm going to talk to you about being guided by the signs and symbols from the universe, from nature, that are all around us every day, all the time. <laughs> and we're guided sometimes without even realize, without even realizing that we're being guided when we have a moment of inspiration, when we have an aha moment, when we suddenly have this great idea pop into our head. And then usually the first thing we do is start to talk ourselves out of that and we don't take action on it. So that idea will go on to somebody else, like Elizabeth Gilbert writes in her book, Big Magic, that there's all of these ideas out there. And if you don't act on your idea, it will go to someone else who will eventually. So I would say always take action on your idea. My best friend and I even had an inspired moment and bought a domain, a, a domain name a couple of years ago, uh, just because we were so excited in the moment. But did anything happen with that? No, and we decided not to renew it. But that's really the worst thing that's going to happen if you don't, if you do take action that maybe nothing comes of it. But if you don't take action, then you're never going to know. But we have signs and symbols all of the time that are guiding us to have deeper understanding about ourselves in all sorts of situations. So especially, if anything is happening in your body, if you're sick, if you're injured, if you have an accident, if anything is going on physically, you can look at that as just, oh, well, bad luck, or, oh, that's just an accident. Or you can actually look that up and see what is that all about. So three weeks ago, I broke my foot by doing literally nothing. I got up from this chair, took one step with my left foot, and took the next step with my right foot and heard this giant crack. And it was quite alarming. Um, my right foot was uh, fast asleep. So I guess it didn't hold me up. It's amazing I didn't totally wipe out, but I ended up breaking my foot and it's still a lot of really pretty colors at the moment. And it did, it stopped me, it grounded me to a halt. So it was a bummer, it was an accident. And um, me knowing me <laughs> as I was, taking myself down the stairs on my butt one by one. I was clearing the shock and trauma from that experience from my body as I felt it invade me. I just was pulling it out and sending it back to source so that I could function and be in alignment. And then when I could, I looked up, what do feet mean in your body? Um, everybody knows this book, You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay, the, the queen, the grandmother of healing. And I was surprised to say that it was about understanding of ourselves and our lives, past, present, and future. And I thought, huh, well, that's really interesting because I have a pretty good understanding about myself and my life. And I thought, well, what was I doing right before I got up out of this chair and went to take a step? And I was working on my book. As you all know, my first book is about to be launched. The launch date is the 21st of this month. And I'm very, very excited about that. But I'm also really, really confused <laughs> about the whole process. Really, it's been another vertical learning curve. Besides taking this business online four years ago, another vertical learning curve where I really felt uh, very confused with the whole process but just kept plugging away and now it's the same experience with getting this first um, Kindle book out and it's been a big learning curve and there's a lot of other things that are going in my going on in my life that I don't understand at the moment and so when I looked that up and saw that it made me stop for a moment and really go within to think well which part of my life of myself of this life, of past lives, but I usually just focus on this life, unless it's really obviously a past life thing, but usually start with this life. What am I really not understanding here? So it made me go within and do some deep personal work so that I could clear things that were holding me back. Because when you break something, obviously it's going to slow you down. Years ago, when I moved to Brighton and we were going back some time now, I don't know, probably almost 10 years ago, 
uh, in my in my new flat there, glass was shattering all over the place. Picture frames were breaking, falling off the wall. Glasses were breaking, and I'm not somebody who generally breaks things a lot. That was very out of the norm. But this was a lot of shattering glass, and I thought, what is going on here? So I looked up spiritually, what does shattering glass mean? And it was something about breaking illusions, breaking illusions of the past. And that was the first time I think that I had ever lived alone on my own, not as a roommate, not as somebody's wife or partner. And it was a really interesting time. It was a big shift in my consciousness and in my reality. It was a big reality check. So that was really interesting. You can always look up the practical meaning of something, or if it's a physical thing, look up the medical meaning, the physical meaning, because that can give you insight into your injury too, what weak spots there are, what you might need to focus on or change in yourself to have a stronger immune system or whatever the issue is. But then look up the spiritual meaning of things too, because in the work that I do, um, everything starts up here in our neural pathways and what we think and how we perceive things, usually without the full story from when we were children. So if you look at the spiritual meaning of things, you'll get deeper insight into what's really going on for you underneath the surface. And that goes like pleurisy. Um, many years ago, like 20 years ago, I had pleurisy. And that's when uh, the, the lining the lining in between your lungs or the lining of your lungs, something about your lungs gets infected. And this is all heart chakra stuff. And it's all about sadness and grief. And I was going through a really sad time when all of that happened. And so also animals, you know, the animal totems. So when I first moved back to Ilkley here where I raised my kids and then I left for 10 years and then I came back. So a year ago, right after I had moved back, I was driving home at night from a close friend's house. I had just moved, moved back and there was a badger, a big, beautiful badger right in the middle of the road. And I was quite excited because you don't see badgers that often. And I thought, oh, that's really cool. I gotta go look up what badgers mean. And it was about uh, forti fortifying things in your life that make you feel secure. <laughs> and meanwhile, I just moved home where my kids are, where my people are, and to have a sense of security, especially during the end of lockdown when I'd been in isolation for so long. So that was really interesting too. So look up the spiritual meanings of things. Also, we can we're guided all the time. You can follow your nose. Your nose can take you places. In fact, that's how Esther Hicks of Abraham Hicks first started to channel Abraham because she was literally following her nose. She noticed that she was doing this and then her nose was spelling out letters. And so Jerry, her husband, started to write down what the letters were until finally Abraham the non-physical beings that she channels came through vocally once they could slow down their vibration enough so that she could hear them properly. So your nose will lead you places, your eyes will lead you places, your feet will lead you places. So follow your eyes, follow your gaze. What are you settling on? So the other day I was uh, getting down on the floor to do some ab exercises. Not everything stops when you break your foot. <laughs> and I have my bookcases on the back wall. And suddenly my eye just got drawn to one book in particular. They're all there. A card was covering half of the bottom, but I knew what the book was. It was My Mother, Myself by Nancy Friday, which I read when I was 25 years old. And I remember it being extremely profound then. Anyway, I thought, oh, wow, this is a brand, brand spanking new copy on my bookshelf. I wonder when I rebought that. And um, then I just kind of dismissed it and was about to do abs. And then I thought, well, ho hold on a minute, hold on. 
pay, pay attention, pay attention. You're being guided. You obviously saw that book for a reason. So come on, take the book off the shelf. So I took the book off the shelf and I like to open books just randomly to see where they fall, to see what I might see. And I read one paragraph and I thought, oh, wow, yeah, this is not a, not a light read because it was pretty intense. And then I turned the pages to another page and one paragraph really jumped out at me and it triggered me big time. And I thought, wow, okay. I was definitely supposed to read this book <laughs> right now, or at least this paragraph. It's still out of the bookcase because I know it is the time to reread that book. It obviously was calling out to me. And I got in the bath at that point in time and just really meditated on what I had read and let that sink in. And it um, allowed me to go within myself much deeper than I had around this subject and really do a lot of personal work on that and discover some things that I needed to bring to the surface. This could all be totally related with breaking my foot three weeks ago. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But anyway, I was following that guidance. So these are signs and symbols from the universe that happen all of the time to us. I used to work with an amazing healer um, near Cheltenham. He was in the new forest at that, no, not the new forest, the black forest. Oh gosh, some forest. <laughs> and, um, and I was in his healing room and my eyes took me to this weird looking machine. And I was like, what, what is that? And it was an oxygenating machine. It puts more oxygen in the water to help getting everything in your system moving. And I was doing a keto diet at the time, which uh, although I lost some weight, it's not the best diet for me. And so I bought this oxygenation machine and I really love it. And my house at that time in Cheltenham had lots of mold in it. And I was worried about having breathed in all of this mold and it had a thing that you could sniff this oxygenated air to, to clean out all of your organs. So that was a really cool discovery simply because I was following my eyes and there was lots of stuff in his room, but that's the thing that I landed on. So often, I mean, I was always the kid in school where the teacher would be like, Shannon, what's the answer to this? And I'd be like, huh? You know, from looking out the window, totally in another realm, probably. But I was off looking out the window, probably paying attention to things that actually mattered to me than whatever the teacher was talking about. So if you're one of those people that tends to gaze out of the window or spot somebody or something like why are you why are you focusing on that what is it what is the message from whatever you're looking at there for you what are you meant to get from that so if your eye falls on a book and pick pick up the book and look at it or google whatever the meaning of something is and if your eye falls on a person then maybe you're supposed to talk to that person i don't know it's really exciting, but when you start to pay attention to the signs and symbols from the universe, your life changes because you, it helps you go deeper within yourself. So, right, most everybody, when we see a rainbow, oh, wow, it's, it's a sign, it's a sign, it's going to be a good day, whatever it is that you need, and it doesn't have to always be good stuff because the contrast is really good stuff too, breaking my foot in my opinion, was not good stuff. But the things that I've learned about myself as a result of being stopped literally in my tracks, uh, I've had to really dive in and look at that. And every time you're going through a challenging time in your life when you're meeting contrast, yeah, it's not fun. We cry and we feel uncomfortable and we don't have understanding perhaps. But what it does do if you're doing this kind of work is that it helps you go deeper within yourself. So it gives you a, a real definite clue of what it is that you need to work on so that you can apply all of these wonderful tools to your own self-development and evolution. And then you do have understanding. So it's all for a purpose. I really do believe that everything happens for a higher reason. And the frustration for me anyway, comes when you don't know what the higher reason is yet. But if you can tap into that and trust and do the work, 
then you can stay in alignment most of the time, regardless of what you're going through. It takes some practice and we all get pushed out of alignment and down our spiral all of the time. But when you have magical tools to help you uh, get back in alignment, even just for a moment so that you can get out of your little pity party and get into a place of, of, of faith and hope and learning about yourself, then that moment of alignment, even if it's just for a moment, will take you to the next one. And you'll be able to pull yourself out of whatever dip you've been in. I know, because I've been there this past week. It's been a it's been a challenging week. Anybody who's broken their foot or hurt their foot will know you don't get around too easily. Um, our feet are really important. So um, follow your follow your guidance system. You know, everything means something. And some people do go to that extent. You know, if a piece of paper falls on the floor, they're examining that. Or if something looks a certain way, they're looking at that. And yeah, you can absolutely get extremely carried away and go down that rabbit hole and be moving things around all the time because um, placement matters, energy, everything is energy. And so everything around you affects how you are going to be too in relation to that energy. But before we get so out there with everything, just focus on yourself, focus on your body, focus on, on your immediate surroundings and what's catching your eye. What are the inspired moments that are coming into your head? If you'd love to learn all of the magical tools that I teach my students, who are more than halfway through From Fear Into Love at the moment, I'd really love to hear from you because it's life-changing stuff. We have so much power and the ability to change our right now, right here and now emotions, change our relationship to our emotions, the emotions that hold us back and keep us down. Even if we're in a dip, we still have the tools and they can still work in our favor to help us get to the next place. So I really want to help you get through this time in life. The whole world is in a place of fear and unrest and paranoia and worry and sadness and grief. There's a lot of that going on with all of the horrendous things that are happening in the world. And so personally, we can put down our anxiety, but if you're empathic at all, which most of you in this group are, it's, it's almost like we can't put down that anxiety because we're feeling, we're feeling all of this heaviness from the rest of the world. So it's a time when having tools that can help you pick yourself up that can help you get in alignment, even if it's just for a moment, because that moment will take you to the next. This is the time more than ever that we really need to practice, practice the tools that we know, practice using our wisdom that we have and talk to your friends and share what's going on. Not the time to keep everything inside. So I'd love to hear from you and help you be able to speak your truth safely and help you learn some new cool stuff that can, that can help you meet your contrast and your challenges, whatever they are for the rest of your life. I love you all so much and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the evening. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.